Let me ask you these three questions. Number one, who taught you the way you think about money? Second question, who taught you about what wealth and success means? Third question, who taught you how to make the decisions you make currently right now with the money that you have or with the money that you've loved to obtain? So in this episode, let's unveil the secrets of money, wealth, and success from the richest and wisest king who ever lived, King Solomon here in Ecclesiastes chapter nine of the Wealth and Wisdom series here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. So let's keep this in mind. King Solomon, who has reigned Israel now for the last 40 years, he's seen everything. Ever since he took charge, became a king at 20 years old, asked God for wisdom, he's seen good and bad people, and guess what? Good and bad things happen to both good and bad people. He's seen faithful and non-faithful people. And guess what? Good and bad things happen to both faithful and non-faithful people. And King Solomon has seen people do the right thing and people not doing the right thing. And guess what? Good and bad things happen to both faithful and non-faithful people. But yet he says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, everybody's got one thing coming to them, and that sadly is death. That everything they worked hard for in their entire life is gone. Now, keep this in mind. I'm a little skeptical right now, and a little, actually a little kind of ticked off how King Solomon is talking here in Ecclesiastes, whole entire chapter so far, compared to how he was talking in Proverbs. You see, King Solomon, he started well in his life, he started well in his career, he had a prime time of his entire life as king, but now, He's not finishing so well. He's declining at a rapid pace, and, and he's writing chapters of Ecclesiastes in a way that he's reflecting on life because he's not finishing well because King Solomon had decided to marry other women that served different gods, and guess what? God got pissed off at him, and he started taking things away from King Solomon. So with it being said, I got three major key takeaways from Ecclesiastes chapter nine of how King Solomon is viewing the world as it relates to money, wealth, and success. First one, enjoy life and embrace life's small pleasures. Let's read what he says here in Ecclesiastes chapter nine, three through nine. It goes like this. This is the evil in everything that happens under the sun. The same destiny overtakes all. The hearts of people, moreover, are full of evil and there's madness in the hearts where they live. And afterwards, they join the dead. Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. For living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and their name is forgotten. They love, and their love, and their hate, and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. So go, eat your food with gladness. Drink your wine with a full heart. God has already proved what you do. Always be clothed in white, and always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun, all your meaningless days, for this is your lot in life and in your toilsome labor under the sun. Now, did you read those words? Did you listen to those words? How grumpy do you think King Solomon sounds right now? He's absolutely just in a position of just angry at the world, he's probably angry at God, and he's writing these things like, your life is meaningless? Come on, King Solomon. But what he does say here, that many of you may love to hear, he says, eat and drink. Bottom line, King Solomon says, eat, drink, have a happy heart, that according to the scripture, God approves of this. Hey, he even says, wear good clothes and smell good too. Now, don't take my word for it. Please, I encourage you, for those watching this series of Wealth and Wisdom, I encourage you, don't let me read the Bible for you. Go and read the Bible for yourself. Have your own experience with reading God's word. See what God has in store for you as you read the Bible and you take in those words at the place that you are in your life currently today. And as I reflect on my life, this past weekend I just celebrated my 50th birthday. We had friends come in, we had family fly in, we had a blast right here in Frisco, Texas. And I asked myself this question, okay, I'm 50 years old, here's an exercise. This exercise I did when I first started my entrepreneurial career coming out the military. I asked myself one question, is the last 10 years something I'd like to repeat for the next 10 years, just at a different scale. From 40, 49, I said, absolutely, I do. Now, when I was 30 years old, I asked myself those same questions too. 
do I want to repeat the last 10 years of my life into my 30s? I said, absolutely not. I asked myself that at the 10-year mark of my career in insurance. I asked myself, the way you've been going about selling life insurance annuities and financial services, do you want to go about doing the same way marketing and advertising the way you have for the next 10 years? I said, absolutely not. There's got to be a cheaper, less expensive way to go about doing business versus buying leads and doing dinner seminars where people can care less about who you are, but yet it's an expense, massive expense item on your end. So there's got to be a different way to do things a lot better and have enjoyment of what you're doing in every day that you are doing it. And the second thing I never wanted to pursue, I thought I wanted to pursue it, which is what they call balance, work-life balance. Listen, I want to be happy every stinking day. And what I end up doing, instead of looking for balance, I fought for integration of my life, my personal life, my spiritual life, my career, my business, my money. Put that all friends, I put that all together and looking for balance, having time here, having time here, and trying to separate everything and, and try to schedule everything in. I say, hey, let's all get together. Let's all integrate what we're doing together in our family, our faith, our finances. If you come to our office, it looks like a locker room. You come to our office, it's competition. You come to our office, there's a lot of excitement and, and fun and challenge and competition. And same thing too with my spiritual life. At church, at seven o'clock in the morning Saturdays, we're doing push-ups with Pastor Garrett Unklebach. We integrated everything that we love to do into our life. So therefore, we're not pursuing balance, we're seeking integration to make sure everything we do on a daily basis integrates everything we love about life. And the last thing is I reflect on this and what I've been looking to do in my life too as well, I encourage you to consider is honor everybody that's in your life that you choose to have in your life. And for those that's no longer in your life, you gotta learn very quickly to forgive those that aren't. You decide to say bye-bye to them. It's not a good business partnership. It's not a good friend. Forgive them for them not stepping up to what you'd like to have them in your life. Don't worry about it. Live with a light heart. Have a lot of love in here and let them do their thing and pray for them, encourage them. But if they're not willing to run at the speed or look at the same things, the perspective, not to say that you can't have people in your life that's challenging you to grow and have different opinions, but if they're not running at the same speed overall, improving the way you want to improve, you might want to consider finding somebody else to run with in your life and having the right running mate to honor those in your life that are running at the speed you want to run at. That is awesome for you to have in your life. It makes life a lot of fun. The second thing I took out of Ecclesiastes chapter nine is King Solomon actually asks us to take risk. Yes, calculated risks. Let's see what he says here in chapter nine, verses 10 through 11, it goes like this. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. From the realm of the dead, where you're going, there's neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift, or the battle to the strong. Nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. That's right, time and chance happens to us all. And you don't wanna be buried in the ground and say, man, I wish I would have done that. I wasn't there to be there, and a lot of regret in my life. So hey, take calculated risk. Time and chance is gonna to happen to you anyway, regardless if you do it or you don't do it. So when it comes to that person you want to have a relationship with, take a shot. When it comes for you to invest in something, take a shot. When it comes to you to take an adventure you've never done before, take a shot. If it means something that you haven't done with your family before, take a doggone shot. Take a calculated risk, but please do not operate from a position of fear at all. Because you see, life is a probability game. You make better decisions and have better results if you seek wisdom and wise counsel, seek diligent work, have discipline in your life, and take action with your faith. Don't just gather information. Don't just gather education. Don't just be around wise counsel and do nothing with it. I hope that you take action so that for, you can learn from your faith. You can learn from your education, your counsel by taking decisive action. And with that, you gain a lot of wisdom. In the spirit of the Nike slogan, just do it, King Solomon asked us to embrace risks, to act decisively and put full effort into your ventures because success is often a mix of preparation handling setbacks, and recognizing opportunity. Third takeaway from chapter nine. Let me ask you a few questions. Number one, where do you think most people go for information? Answer, what do you think? Phone, maybe newspapers, Google, magazines, okay? So most people go for information. Second question I wanna ask you, where do most people go for 
education. Huh? School, college, trade schools, certification programs. Okay, that's where most people go for education. Third question, where do you think most people go for to seek wisdom? Huh? Completely different word there. Where do most people go to seek wisdom? And see, that is what is lacking in America today. You got a lot of people that are so educated, they're so sharp, they're so locked into academia, which is great, which is awesome. I'm glad they took the educational approach to learning things, but wow, there is something to be learned. Well, not only do you combine education and learning with experience of good and bad decisions and knowing when to apply the information and the education that you've come to learn. King Solomon drops a story here in Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse 14 through 18. It goes like this. There was once a small city with only a few people in it. And a powerful king came against it, surrounded it, and built a huge siege against it. Now, there lived in a city a man, poor but wise, and he saved the city by his wisdom. But nobody remembered that poor man. So I said, wisdom is better than strength. But the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are no longer heeded. The quiet words of the wise are more to be heeded than the shouts of a ruler of fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. See, this story is of a poor man that saved the city through his wisdom and sadly forgotten. This illustrates that wisdom can be more effective than strength and weaponry, but it's not always recognized and celebrated. So as you build your empire, remember that intelligence and cunning strategy often trump brute force or loudness in the world of business. So what I've come to discover in my short 49 going on 50 years now is there's a lot of smart and intelligent people in the world, but sadly, a lot of them lack wisdom and a lot of them lack common sense. So as you wrap up, which one of these three lessons is the most meaningful to you? Is it enjoying life and enjoying simple pleasures? Is it seeking wisdom and intelligence through those that have common sense? Or is it number three, taking calculated risk? We listed all three of them right here. Please put it in the comment section below. Which one is the biggest takeaway that you've gotten from this episode of Ecclesiastes chapter nine, by the richest and wisest king who ever lived, King Solomon. So if this series has sparked your curiosity, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you follow every Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, another episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series as we unpack through the lens of an entrepreneur, not a pastor, through the lens of an entrepreneur, lens of a guy that just happens to be in a church is attempting to do his very best with his finances and the stewardship of the blessings bestowed upon him. Wealth and Wisdom series here right on 7 Fear Squad YouTube channel, Sunday, 6 p.m. And that being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, hit like, and please drop your comments down below. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it down below. We might just use your comment into a future episode coming soon. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you.